Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome along. It's the penultimate round. We're here at Ulton Park. It is the Rapid Drivers Club British Porsche Cup. It's round six, and after five rounds of racing, both Kane Dirham and I. Kane's there any second now. You there, Kane? Kane's not there quite ready, but we are cannot wait to get under underway. And what promises to be two contributions and perhaps sacrifices to the sim racing gods as our fearless knights once again try and tame these 2017 Porsche Cup Dragons around the heart of Englandshire, or best of it at least in Cheshire, as they duel out to be crowned monarch supreme of the RDC British Porsche Cup Series, which, as I promised you back at the start of race one, will go down to the last race of the series, of course. It is the Rapid Drivers Club and is sponsored by Vispa, a company creating virtual experiences that feel natural, immersing you in a 3D multiplayer work environment. We're collaborating, brainstorming, and I've typed that wrong, building are both productive and creative. Vispa, bringing you the tools to make work as enjoyable as multiplayer gaming. Because just like Vispa, Rapid Driver Club is a very young startup like group of people who just love their and to follow their passions and try and build something that people that love, and they certainly have here with this Porsche Cup. Do we have Kane with us at the moment? So still no sign of Kane quite at the moment. As I said, we are here for round six. Uh, up until now, there has been a slight change in this series. We, of course, have had... Um, Two races uh, every single week, apart from the 40 minutes at Spa. It looks like the guys are well and truly in, so let's jump on board and actually get a look at the guys out on track, of course. That's exactly what we are here for. Um, it is Ulton Park. We'll have a quick look, if we get a chance, at the championship table, uh, where there is currently five points separating, or sorry, six points separating the top five drivers. Um, I did say at the start of week one that this was going to be very, very, very close indeed. And that has absolutely played out in front of our very eyes for the last five weeks. Uh, there we go. Let us jump on board with the man himself. Oh, no, not that Jay Harris. Where is Jens? Yes, isn't quite in, and Kyle is in the pits. Well, I'll tell you what, let's jump on board with Kieran Clifford then. Very good friend of mine, no secret at all. So let's jump on board. There we go. So we are on board with Clifford. He is in the Hublot livery, and I can tell you, he's had a great series so far. He is in sixth at the moment, 192 points, and he is the man that is just a drift of this battle at the top, and I do mean Battle, we've got Alex Nunes, 221 points, followed by Rennie Renendito, 220 points. Tom Davidson, perennial pole sitter, 216 points. And then Cornelius Philbinger, repping for the sponsors, all-round good guy. And we'll be bringing you an interview with him next week. He is on 214 points, along with Elliot Wilkes. That's right. Five drivers, six Points for races, two reverse grids still to come. So we can expect absolutely amazing things. There is Sam Sue, a man that was leading the championship mysteries last week, finds himself down in 10th position. Can we see him make any sort of moves back towards the top? Cornelius is in the pits. Let's have a look on board with Elliot. There we go. There is a Deutsche poster, of course. Now, that sounds like clicking and clacking in the background. Hark, do I hear an Australian commentator yonder in the distance? Good evening, everybody. Can we hear me now? <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> How are you, Ken? <laughs> I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. We've been talking for the last hour, John, and all of a sudden race time and I disappear. Yes, um, indeed. Yeah, technical. so, yeah, oh, yeah, the Gremlins, they do love the Gremlins, Ken. They do love the Gremlins. We have a minute left of free practice, my friend. Let's see how much green you can get through while I drive on through to show some camera work of the guys on track. How's that? Are you yes, good for that? Everything you still set up okay, yeah? 
Yeah, everything's fabulous. Perfect, We're all ready Good to luck. go. So, um, I have unfortunately missed all of John's chat at the start, but <coughs> we are here for round six of the Vispa Powered Rapid Drivers British Porsche Cup. We are nine races down with only four to go, and this week we are at Alton Park, guys. I, for one, am very excited to see these drivers in these cars at this track. It's going to be 12 to 13 laps, I'm predicting, of four-point kilometres of highs and lows. And let's hope that's just uh, the undulations in the track, because with only four races left in the series, it is going to be on for young and old. And like John's probably already touched on, very, <laughs> just about. <laughs> very tight at the top of the ladder. I did, as I did, as again, I did mention, I did give the guys and girls at home a quick rundown. Oh, we see some tyre barrier action there from Wilkie. He's laying down the marker. I own this track. I'll decide the track limits. Uh, I did talk Alex Nunes, 221 points. Renan Dio, 220 points. Davidson, 216 points. Philbinger and Wilkie, 200 and 14 points each could not be closer. If, if only, as I've said again twice already, as you can see, if only one of the commentators had pointed out how, how close this was going to be all series. That's right, John. It has <laughs> been extremely close all series. And not just the one driver or you know, two drivers being that close in the field. It um been chopping and changing all through the series. So these... Reverse grid races uh, for the second race have really, really thrown it to the drivers. So plenty of action today. And uh, poor old Alex Nunes, uh, championship leader at the moment. He's going to be sandwiched between <clears throat> his two nearest rivals, sorry, for the for both of these 20-minute races today. So Alex has qualified in between Tom Davidson and Randy Renandito. So, Alex Nunez is going to have... Got that right first time morning. at 5 o'clock in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get a round of applause? It's about 4 o'clock in the morning. It's 4 o'clock in the morning and you got Ren and Dieter's name right first time. Congratulations. Sorry to completely throw you off your game, but please do continue, my man. <laughs> Let's hope I can remember, remember to say it the rest of the time. But yes, so those guys definitely going to be locked in. Plenty of, uh, plenty of scraps today, so I can't wait for that one to unfold either. Yeah, and it certainly will unfold. Sam Sue then, I did mention he missed the race. He finds himself down in seventh. Very, very quick. Uh, he starts in fifth. He will definitely be making charges. Cornelius, we've seen him. A couple of early incidents. Brands hatching like didn't quite go his way, but he has been there or thereabouts with the results and finds himself battling for podium glory. Kieran Clifford then in seventh place. I keep saying a very good friend of mine in the Hublot. And there we go. He has made it in. Hallelujah. It's homeschool racer himself, Pete Greaves, in his Brazilian brand livery. So let's see if he can get himself a top 10 finish and get himself some points out of the next two races. Reverse order, what, Kate? Rever reverse order, good kid. Did somebody say these are guys reverse are going order. in reverse order, good kid? Reverse order, John. You heard it. It's, uh, it's definitely proven to be the one to watch. It's one of the cars that's stalled on the, the start line there. So they can get that car running and then off and down the track on this formation lap. So all ready to go almost here, John. Just a quick little mention here. Elliot Wilkie, he's going to be my dark horse. Let's hope he's not listening right now because we're going to throw it all out. <laughs> but one to watch today, Elliot Wilkie. He's had some pretty consistent finishes, but they've been week in, week out. So finds himself, like you mentioned, locked in points with... Cornelius, uh, and definitely been improving the last few races. So let's hope he can uh, start down in 10th, 10th position today. Uh, so a couple of little mid-pack struggles on his hands possibly, but yeah, definitely one to watch for me. Indeed, well, there you go. That's Kane's one to watch. I think I'm going to throw my hat in the uh, Johan Tyra. I think if Johan can get himself a really good, clean race here, I know that Alex is definitely going to be a contender. Tom, uh, not sure how popular I'm going to be. He can definitely qualify, can Tom. But he does find himself third in the championship. OK, he's only five points behind, but for me, that definitely could have been a much bigger gap that he enjoys at the top of the table. 
2.69 miles, 4.3 kilometers for all you newfangled kids. Yet another British tradition, uh, RAF base turned racetrack. 1953 though, so it was after the war when this was used for RAF storage, I believe, Kane. Um, but yeah, right in the middle of the Cheshire countryside, and it is one of these tracks, Kane, it's very, very deceiving. We'll get some onboard footage from the guys. But the undulations going up and down in the corners uh, around this track really, really are going to be game-changing. Yeah, it makes for a couple of uh, slightly blind corners. See the guys come around and take out some signs on the pro on the way. So good to see the boys of uh, shell on shell action there. <laughs> yeah, getting some uh, getting some sign work removed. That one was clearly in the way for the next corner. Um, but yeah, definitely undulations, John, for sure. And a uh, very narrow track. You see the guys lined up now. Not too much space to be doing many passing. So it's going to be interesting catching these guys. Always interesting in these Porsche cars, <laughs> uh, Porsche Cup cars. So yeah, not two, wait for this one. The 2017 Porsche Cup cars, they have certainly proven to be quite the handfuls and more than just a little bit entertaining. Oh, they're just about to cross the start finish line. Here we go then. Week six, race number eleven, drive through for a position. Who's that? Johan Ty, cause of the comment here. He takes a drive through. It's four wide in the background. Sam Sue looks like he's getting all kinds involved. Shell and Deutsche Post come together then. So Cornelius Philbinger, he sneaks his way through. There's all kinds of half. Oh, and that's Brand. Ah, uh, home school racer. He's gone off. There's the Madrix racer, and I recognise that livery. Oh, and he's made contact. That has made contact with, oh, that's Kyle Harris. Oh, and there's a shell livery going off again. So the front two are off and running, although Johan Tai has got himself apparently. Pete Greaves is in the back. He's got a bit of damage. Tom Davidson then is leading the race. Alex Nunes is in second. Sam Sue, he's up to third. McKeon Clifford now battling away in fourth position. He's got Harry Webb just in behind him. Elliot Wilkie has dropped down the field. The timing boards are telling me all kinds of porky pies came. I've got no idea who's doing what. For being honest, Tom Davidson's in the front though. Alex Nunes. Definitely second. Sam Sue, definitely third. Kieran Clifford, he is in fifth position. He's got Harry Webb behind him. Elliot Wilkie behind him. Cornelius Philbinger is also behind him. Oh no, they're all in front of him. Kane, the timing board, I'm not sure what it's doing wrong, but Johan Tai is down in 10th. We'll need to wait on that to update. All I do know is Davidson and Nunes are off and running and Sam Sue is holding on to that other podium position. Kieran Clifford is well down the field and he's just been overtaken again, so I'm not sure what the timing board is doing there as we see him dropping down now. So yes, he has been involved in an incident then, Kane. Uh, so I've cut you off twice, he's carrying a lot of damage. That's Jackie Harris in the Mitch one livery coming up behind them. So a lot of drivers benefiting there from a big coming together between quite a few cars. And Harry Webb, who had a great debut last week, finds himself down in eighth game as Davison and Nunes are off and running. A lot more side-by-side -side action there. <laughs> Sorry, Kane. Is that Kyle? Is that Kyle Harris? It is Kyle Harris getting involved. Oh, yeah, runs. Oh, and there's a bit of a wiggle. Sorry, Kane. On you go, man. <laughs> Plenty of action in the opening exchanges, Jones. Kieran Clifford comes into the pits. Uh, as you said, Johan tied with that drive-through for out of position, so he's going to be awfully disappointed there with the start of his race. Kyle Harris does look like he's made his way up into sixth position. Eighth. Uh, eighth again. Yeah, he's in eighth, yeah. Plenty more timing board issues. But Tom Davidson, John, as we say, good qualifier, has gotten himself off to a fairly decent start at the moment almost two seconds in front of Alex Nunes. So great start for him, not so much for a lot of the field behind him. Yeah, no, it certainly has been an interesting one. Kieran Clifford is in the pits. Uh, that definitely looked like a lot of damage he was sustaining. Harry Webb, he had a great debut here last week, took himself a couple of very, very handy first places. Oh, all kinds of snap overs here there. And we're seeing on board now <coughs> just how up and down this track is here. As we look at this straight section of the track, as Kane mentioned, a lot of blind corners and curves here. As you can see, absolutely zero sight of the entrance. He's got Harry holds that absolutely fantastic. Well, putting Renandito under all kinds of pressure. Renandito doing his best to hold on to sixth place. Webb, though, very, very good racer indeed. And I tell you what, he's gone up to inside and absolutely nailed that. Renandito, he comes fighting straight back, though, side by side. They are. There's Kyle Harris in the background watching Pete Graves 
just behind him. So Webb has got the move done. Look how close Renandito then gets in at that beautiful shell livery. Oh, and Harry's run wide. Harry's run himself a bit wide. He's come back on the track. Renandito then is definitely going to have the run. He's going to get very, very close coming through this double kink. It's not even a corner of this stage. It's just like a double kink with his elongated left-hand corner onto the straight. Harry then does hold on to that then. And Elliot Wilkie, I'm sure someone mentioned him as a dark horse cane. Uh, he finds himself up in fourth position, definitely in advance of where he qualified this evening. Yeah, that's six places gained in those opening two laps here, John. So, yeah, definitely glad Elliot's Oh, they both made mistakes. Sorry, they both made mistakes. One of them made a slightly bigger mistake than the other, and Sam Sue is now under all kinds of pressure. Could this be position number seven for Wilkie then, Kate? Talk me through this. Yeah, he's got this uh, this Porsche stalled in for these opening laps, John. Really, uh, really knuckling down and getting these positions. So clearly got through that carnage at the start that uh, was also hard to follow. <laughs> it really uh, was. Yeah, big moves, big moves for Ellie, Elliot, and uh, as you said, got Sam Sue in his sights as well. Sam Sue making up lots of positions too there in the opening. Um, a couple, let's say two positions. So, so yeah, a couple of. Couple of changes, big loser there as well. Rendy Rendendito down in seventh position. He started in third. Yeah, he finds himself down in seventh. There is Jackie Harris chasing down Jason Westerby. Jason carrying uh, what looks like a fair. I did think that was Kyle Harris. So when I declared earlier that Kyle Harris was in a contact, it was because of this car here. It wasn't Kyle. Turns out it was Jason. Jason finds himself. In 10th position, of course, Pete Greaves as well, sporting a bit of damage there on his post, got caught up in whatever incident it was. These cars, believe it or not, Ken, are actually quicker than their GT3 brethren in a straight line, but, and it's a big old but, they have what is safe to say a slight variation in the amount of mechanical and aerodynamic grip that they have compared to their bigger brothers as perfectly illustrated by Wilkie catching a bit much care there. And that really does show, especially on the opening laps, it really can be a nightmare to get the tyres up to temp. Yeah, Elliot really showing no trouble getting the tyres up to temp. He's throwing this Porsche around like his life depends on it here. Um, Sam Sue got a little bit clear now, so this is going to be one to follow for the rest of this race, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think it will be, I think it will be, and uh, yeah, uh, there we go, we've actually got game sound now. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, there you go, you can now hear the beautiful engines of those courses. We are four laps in. <coughs> oh, tell you what, oh, keep out the wall, keep out the wall, keep out. Wow, he kept that out of the wall, Ken. <laughs> that, oh, that <laughs> that, that's saving the day there for Will, Ken. He kept that out of the wall. I know I was joking in the chat before, I was doing the radio. Wow, Will, Ken. He really does want the camera time. He has said, you know what, Ken, you've tipped me as one to watch, so ladies and gentlemen, just watch me. I am going to take this boss, look at that. Side of his into the left-hander. If he's not listening to this and deliberately doing that, I will eat my own hat. Old Hall Corner, Dentons in Cascades. It certainly nearly was a cascade effect there, Ken. But he is woo, lighting up the back of the Porsche, lighting up those tyres, and he is having all kinds of fun in there. And uh, yeah, we may even see a battle, as you say, between him and Sam Sue break out at some point in time. If Elliot can stop having so much fun and maybe do some racing, perhaps. That's right, Elliot. Elliot's going to need to re <laughs> gonna need to remember there's 12 and a half minutes left to, to get these tyres to last through. So definitely, uh, definitely fun to watch, but just be careful on those tyres, Elliot, because we want to see this all the way to the end as it's a twist and left and right again. It's packed behind, closing in a little bit, John. Cornelius and Harry Webb. Yes, indeed. I mean, you see the pack behind that is, of course, Harry Webb. Um, someone I have had the ple pleasure and privilege of watching this before, and he is very, very quick indeed. In fact, let's do a little... There we go. Nice little cockpit cam, just to see how much undulation up and down and how much steering input is involved to get these cars around this track of course we'll part 1953 this cheeky little number has been on the go as he comes along with the deer leap and some fantastic corner names old hall corner takes you on to of course the avenue down the dead things 
and then to the left-handed cascade. This is a very, very, very tricky left-hander. Just look at the difference in camber on the track. It changes all the way through the corner and out through the exit over that little hump in the road. Another little cheeky hump in the road to imbalance the car. Unsighted care on the left. Just so you can double back onto yourself at Shell Oil's corner. And I tell you what, the last thing you want is any Shell Oil on that corner. I can tell you that is like something out of the Nürburgring as they come along now into the back straight. This, of course, takes you into Britain's. I mean, seriously, talk about sticking a chicane. If that's not Le Mans inspired, I do not know what is. When you do successfully make it through Britain's, Hilltop, Hislops, and Knickerbrook are, of course, next. This little chicane here has seen many of the demise of an over-enthusiastic overtaker in his time. Harry Webb, though, having absolutely no difficulty firing his way through there. And again, more hills up the hill, down the hill. I tell you what, it's a good thing these drivers don't eat just before the drive. Whoa, down the hill again. And then to the right-hander again. You absolutely cannot underestimate how easy it is to get that double apex right-hander wrong. <laughs> these people send you all kinds of wrong. Harry, though. Supreme control, oh snap over steer, snap under steer, he grabs those reins and reels that straight back in to put in a fairly phenomenal lap and one of the quickest cane of the race, in fact less than half a second slower than the quickest lap so far which is by Alex Nunez, 1 minute 35.7, uh, his best so far, although Tom Davidson actually has done a 35.2 but it is and Nunez at the moment, he's showing supreme pace up the front. Oh, Westerby though. Sorry, Kane, we're going to see some Westerby on Pete Greaves' action here. Give us give us, give us, us your thoughts on this while I catch my breath, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, Pete Greaves, home school racer. Uh, going to find himself under pressure from Jason Westerby here. This guy's ninth and 10th in the race so far. A little bit of space between anybody around them so they'll be looking to get some uh, coziness going at the moment as they themselves head into Shell Oil's corner. He said do not want any oil on that. <laughs> or dust corner. on your tyres. Uh, yeah, dusty dusty tyres not the best also. But uh, still just under nine minutes to go John, these guys got plenty of time to get things done and as we see that home school racer Pete Greaves just making that little mistake at the chicane there. And Jason West will be getting that done easily. So uh, that's pretty much all there there is to see here, John. Yeah, there we go. Messlin then. He has just got the move done on Jackie Harris, actually. Jackie there in the Michelin livery coming up and over the hill. And it really is there we go. Some headlights coming on as well. So some diminished lights for the guys to deal with. There's Johan Kai, uh, big loser at the start. And also, let's, yeah, let's not forget Kieran Clifford back out on track in 14th position. If we're talking about the big losers there, Kieran, uh, Kane, sort of called you Kieran now. Uh, yeah, he was caught up in the carnage, uh, no fault of his own. Spent quite a while in the pits getting a bit of damage repaired. Finds himself back out in 14th position, considering he made it up to 4th or 5th at one point. That is going to be hard to take, especially being mid-pack for the reverse order grid next race. Yeah, he'll be looking to make the most out of that next race, absolutely. Um, no, Kieran, he will be looking forward uh, and uh, trying to put this one behind him, but definitely good to see him back out on track, completing these final seven minutes of the race. Um, as difficult as it may be for him to swallow, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll be looking forward and uh, ready for the next race anyway. Yes, indeed he will, indeed he will. Davidson then. Has he finally, oh, don't dream well, Look at this, see the kink in the road there. That is such a beautiful camera angle to show you just what these guys are dealing with. These cars just getting thrown up and down, up and down. So easy in these cars to bottom them out, and you definitely don't want to get getting dusted on your tyres there. Is it too, I mean, curse of the commentator, Kane, am I allowed to say it? Has, has Kane, uh, has Tom, sorry, finally broken the ducks? Uh, finally broken his little car, so he's going to qualify on pole and bring it home for the win. Only done it twice so far this season, and for a man that's qualified on the top so many times, it will be, uh, yeah, it'd certainly be nice for him, I imagine. But uh, six minutes still to go. Give me your thoughts on Tom's situation. Yeah, he's still going to have four 
four laps of uh, intense pressure there as Alex Nunes is just ever so slightly uh, decreasing that gap in front. So it has been up to up to 2.2 seconds at one stage of the race. Nunes has got that down to 1.6 at the moment, so it's going to be very, very interesting to see, like I say, um, and hold on for this maiden win. Uh, very good ball. Well, third win. You know. Third win, sorry. Yeah, but I believe it's his first win from pole position, strangely. So I don't think he's won, if, I'm, if I remember reading my notes correctly, I don't think he's won from pole position, so I don't think pole position has been the kindest for our Tom. Someone in the chat may want to remember. Hi to everyone in the chat, by the way, Jicks are. As, in, as always, tell us who you think is going to win the race. Say hello, say hello, especially now we've got game volume. We've even got Kane volume as well after I'm going missing in action. He was probably down prisoner cell. He's probably down cell block H. Uh, <laughs> I'm here, sorry. I did stick a joke in at the start. Getting the chores out of the way. That's the way it done. Oh, and I tell you what, Johan then has got the move on Jackie Harris. So Johan is back up to 12th. We did miss that there. No, but Johan's got the move done. Kieran is closing the gap ever so slightly as well. He finds himself with the race leader just behind him. Uh, such is the amount of damage that Kieran had to get the pair of, and such is the pace of Tom and Alex up at the front. Kieran very quickly and obligingly pops himself out of the way to let the two race leaders battle it out. Alex Nunes came, uh, came. We're talking about Davidson and Wilkie. He's had himself some cracking, cracking results from the middle of the pack. Getting himself a second place here, especially when he already has a five point lead over Davidson. It means Davidson will close the gap slightly, but it does still leave Nunes very much in the driving seat with Renan Dito finishing down in seventh. So, uh, sorry, at the moment, Running in seven to Zilton Park, seven minutes, about four minutes to go. Anything can still happen. Harry Webb, Harry Webb. Yeah, Alex Nunez is just getting a little bit loose on that exit as well. That drop off. Just a fraction more time to Tom, so even more. It's very, very sideways. That's Elliot. He'll get in that. Uh, that's his. Oh, well, Harry on the grass. All sorts. Yeah, all sorts of sideways still. So this time still holding up for Elliot, but. Definitely dropped off Sam Sue in front and he's got plenty of pressure coming from Harry Rep right now. Yeah, he really does. He really does. Uh, much of weather came on, so let's jump back in to that view there. Much better view there. Again, we see the, the foot on the accelerator. Oh, I tell you what, Elliot really, really is yeah, putting on a show in that force, the 2017 Cup car, but I think it might end up costing them places. <coughs> we do love to see the drivers hang these cars on the edge and Elliot is absolutely 100% with that ethos tonight. He has embraced his inner Vin Diesel and he has taken that car all kinds of fast and all kinds of furiously to all kinds of edges, limits, sideways. His tyres will be absolutely squealing at him come the end of the race. Harry, very, 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 very close indeed. Oh, he's not going to go side, side by side through Shell Oil, is he? When he thought about it. Look at how close he managed to control that car. Oh, the snap oversteer and understeer yet again. Wrists of steel. That man was up holding on to that post. Let's see. We don't want to see from Ernie. Look at Elliot's steering wheel. Let's just appreciate exactly how much input Elliot is putting into that steering wheel at the moment. Keeping this thing coming into the chicane then. Oh, and he's run all kinds of deep, and Harriet is going to say thank you very much. Oh, Elliot, 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 hang on there, hang on there, he's hung on there. He's hung on in there, Ken. Oh, and Harry's just hung on as well. Yeah, Anything you can do, better. Elliot, Harry can do better, surely. <laughs> Absolutely. All sorts of hold your hat moments there, John. Uh, Elliot, just falling foul to uh, a little bit, of, little bit too much. Too much input there from the steering wheel, and Harry, yeah, taking the right advantage there, so. Only two minutes left, it'll be very tough for him to catch Sam in front, but we'll see him make the charge anyway. Can Elliot hold on for a top five? We're heading into the last final two laps as well, so. Yes, indeed you are. Those guys still very close. Expect Elliot and the. Oh, yeah. Expect these guys to be on a show in the next minute 50. And of course, reverse order grid. They'll be starting backwards. Um, <coughs> so all that goodness to look forward to as well. We have 
on track here in Clifford. Got himself caught up in some incidents, had to do some repair, he's down in 14th. We've got Jackie Harris running in 13th position and there's Meslin and Etienne in the Madrix livery. Look at that shiny, shiny in 12th place. There's Johan Tai in 11th. Pete Greaves end hasn't come into the pits to, got his, to get his damage fixed and he is monstering on in 10th. Trying to chase up Jason Westerby, who got himself a little bit of damage as well. He too is cracking on in ninth. Then there is Kyle, of course, one of the founders of the Rapid Drivers Club. Uh, doing not too badly at all in the championship. Finds himself in eighth in this race. Just ahead of him, Cornelius Philbinger, Hugh Blow of Racing, representing, also, of course, representing Vispa.io, a company proudly sponsoring this seven week series in sixth place of Rene Arrenen Vito, seventh, second in the championship, second, seventh in the sixth in this race. Okay, Ken, okay, I'm just going to give up now. Sixth in this race will certainly make it interesting. That's the leader on the last lap. So, Elliot Wilkie currently in fifth, dropping off the back now of Harry Webb. So, some very, very decent pace out and may well close the gap on Sam. Will it be enough to get past them? No, Alex Nunes is in second and then first let's watch him close out the last lap came tom davidson coming around shell oil corner took pole position in qualifying he's led this one start to finish 2.3 seconds up the road and he will be full of confidence going into the reverse order grid after this display yeah start to finish like you say john very good race from tom keeps it clean keeps it out in front and uh Again, he's going to have this battle with Alex in this reverse race grid coming up next. So these two are going to be at it all over again for everybody to see. Um, and yeah, cannot wait for that either. Indeed, indeed. And there Tom comes up the hill. He'll be entering sector three of the course, of course, Lodge. Of course, of course, the course, of course. He's there, of course, the horse. It's uh, Lodge Corner. Up into dear lane. Oh no, he's not quite there yet. This is Lodge Corner, sorry. Get ahead of himself. E Monster, E Wiener, he's in the chat. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, Lodge Corner comes around the dear leap past the pit entrance. So Tom Davidson wins race number 11, 10. Yes, race number 10. Race number 10 it is. So Tom is the winner with Nunez in second. And Sam Sue got himself a very handy podium indeed. And handy it finished when it did because Harry Webb, the man in fourth, he was definitely putting a chase on. And uh, Elliot Wilkie was the man who was putting a show on, side on action, and he comes home in fifth with Renny Renadito in at the Shell Livery. He's coming home to take sixth position. And there is our sponsor, of course, Cornelius Philbinger. Oh, we're getting a bit lively on that last set of kerbs. He's going to take seventh position. There's Kyle Harris, he's going to finish in 8th and Jason Westerby he's coming round to finish a little bit of time to go there we go let's watch Kyle you know come across the line you love to do the car sims Kane you've got to do the car sims there's Kane and uh, there's Kyle coming across the line you see some donuts oh not quite maybe in the next race we've got Jason Westerby coming across the line to finish in ninth, and there is Pete Greaves lights on flashing the lights flashing the lights flashing the lights no, a bit of a delay on the steam, so you won't have heard that yet, but any minute now, he'll be flashed. He's like, oh, yes, there we go, Torpedo. That's it, he takes out. Oh, he got Kieran Clifford, I'll have to remember and write on my extra big check at the end. There's Eddie Meslin coming home in 11th. Johan Tai, he is being pushed along. Is he run out of fuel? He's run out of fuel, and he's being pushed off by his Black Falcon teammate, Alex Nunes. <laughs> wow, Jackie Harris finished in 13th, and Kieran Clifford. There we see at the side of the road, it finishes in 14th position. That was not too bad an opener there, Kate. <laughs> yeah, so plenty, plenty of, uh, plenty of action to digest there as we continue to see Johan get pushed along to the end of the race. Fantastic, fantastic to see <laughs> Alex just <laughs> shoveling along there. Uh, good, good value. Yeah, Indeed. Tom Davidson with a win over Alex Nunez. Tem Su coming third spot there. So, going to do his championship. No problems there. Yeah, Sam going to jump a few positions. Uh, Elliot finishing in fifth behind Harry Webb, who made a, a massive charge for the field there, John. 
Harry starting down in uh, ninth position, so gains five positions there along with Elliot. So those two are the big winners in the opening exchanges of those laps where all sorts of carnage unfolded as Johan makes it across the line and Alex takes off again. So yeah, plenty to digest and uh, get ready for the next race. Yes, indeed, that was an absolute cracking opener there. Uh, the guys and gals once again putting, uh, putting the Porsches through their paces and certainly putting the commentary team through their paces as well. Uh, a fantastic start. Let me just make sure that. That is that, and that is that. Perfect. So, yeah, as Kim was mentioning, the championship now is going to be all up on its head. Alex Nunez is certainly going to be off and running in the lead. Renan Dito, though, he was only a point behind the leader, finishing in sixth position there. So that is definitely not going to do his charge or chance of holding on to a podium position much good. Keith Cornelius, he did finish in seventh, so he's in fourth. He did finish two places behind Wilke, and those two are on the same point. So it's the moment, at the moment, sorry, it is game on for Wilke. He is the one in charge going into the second race uh, of this uh, this championship. The 20 minute is the reverse order grid cane. So give us, uh, as quickly, I've got it popped down here. Uh, not, uh, yeah, a lot of contact there, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Kane, talk us through the qualifying order in reverse. So who are we going to see starting on the front row of the grid? So this week, John, will have Jackie Harris starting on the front row with Jason Westerby right by side, Etlin Meslin and Kyle Harris on the next line. Then be followed by Ella, uh, Kieran Clifford and my one to watch, Elliot Wilkie. So third row back, Elliot will be looking to get another great start and get through this field as well. He will have Harry Reb. Harry Webb. Um, you can say Ren and Dio, but not Harry Webb. <laughs> really? Really, Ken? That's, that's, that's what you expect us to believe at this point in time, is it? <laughs> Something like that, yes. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Elliot will have Harry Webb behind him, followed by Pete Greaves, Jens Harris, and Cornelius. <coughs> Sam Sue. Be down the back as well, Johan Tai, Rindy Renandito, Alex Nunez, and Tom Davidson will be starting from the back of that pack. And that will be the one to watch, John, as those two are locked in. Very heated battle for this championship lead heading into the final round next week. So Rindy will be looking to make up for that poor poor start in the uh, in the first race there, the unfortunate start. So, yeah, he'll be definitely looking to make up make up for that one and uh, get his championship back on track. But uh, still going to be plenty to watch all through the field as we see these reverse grid races have not disappointed in the slightest so far. Uh, as the guys get their free practice on before this second race. Yes, indeed, we've got seven minutes left to go of the practice. Let me just bring you some onboard footage. If we've got anybody, oh, please don't all join and rejoin. <laughs> that doesn't do great things for the camera work. There we go. Let's jump on board with Etienne Wesley. In fact, we have got. In fact, we'll do that one just in case. If there's any chat. Uh, yeah, you know, drivers, they can get a bit passionate and they do like to argue with one another. That's kind of, so we will leave it those logos there in case you guys do want to chat. This is, of course, round number six, races 10 and 11 out of a 13 race series. Series we have had, uh, Donington, which we are going back to. We've had Spa, which was a 40 minute race. It is, of course, a rapid drivers club and it is, of course, sponsored by Vespa. Vespa are a company creating virtual experiences that feel natural, immersing you in a 3D multiplayer work environment where collaborating, brainstorming and team building are both productive and creative. Vespa, bringing you the tools to make work as enjoyable as multiplayer gaming because they understand that great ideas and innovation 
are never achieved by one single person. It always takes a group of people to create something beautiful. This is why we want Visper to be a real collaboration platform where ideas can be created, evolved and developed to be something much, much more. And just like Visper, Rapid Drivers Club are a very young startup-like group of people who just follow your passion and try to build something that people love. So if you're loving what you're watching on screen, and let's face it, why wouldn't you be? It will go down to the last race. Jump on Discord and get involved. Whoa, Etienne, there we go. Tried to do an Elliot Wilkie. Didn't quite work out in his favour. Uh, but you got that one back in chair there. Uh, jump on over to Discord and get involved. You can jump on track and get involved with the racing that these guys and gals are taking part in. I know there is lots more on the horizon for the group founded by Jens and Kyle Harris. I did expect Jens to be racing tonight. Do we have any confirmation, Kane? Have you heard anything with regards to Jens? Do you know yeah? I thought Jens was going to be racing tonight. Yeah, so we did have a couple of those qualifiers. Um, uh, so a couple of the races not managing to get qualifying laps in. They were going to start from the back of the grid, I was, I was told, but they have actually not made it for the race. And yeah, Jens qualified fairly well. Um, seventh, actually. So yeah, very, very interesting to see Jens not making it today. So unfortunate for, like you say, one of the founding fathers of rapid drivers here and it's always great to see them on track um hopefully we will have jens back for the final race next next week yes the return to donington <laughs> so again it's one of those things you can't see with a straight face very very difficult track nunez is in the chat uh, team cars helping one another over the line of course they are and there's sop motorsports coming in to say hello how we doing simon You'll be checking out the eSport drivers. Are we allowed to announce that yet? Or have I put my foot in it, Simon, or Rapid Drivers Club? I take it that has been announced. That has been announced that the SOP have entered the team. So Rapid Drivers Club, I've got to tell you what, the SOP team is a mean machine. So we can expect big things from them in that. But how was your Saturday night going, Simon? Did you catch the first race? It was fun. And it's going to be even more fun. There is Pete Greaves. That's homeschool racer right there. In the brand livery, number 555, involved in a bit of an incident in the first race. <coughs> Finished his race with his bonnet and his front bumper, uh, looking like he wanted a divorce. They were so far apart, so hopefully he can get home in one piece of this lap and get himself some decent points, which he definitely deserves. There is Cornelius Felbinger, our sponsor. And there's Sam Sue. There she was looking for a position. There's Sam Sue, TSR Week. Of course, most famed for his Ben and Jerry's livery. Uh, tonight, he is in the Fabin. And, uh, yeah, I need to be careful how I say that in case I get into trouble from some lawyer someplace. Because you know what people like these days, Ken, you really do have to be careful what you say. But that is the German Farben livery. Uh, look at the times up at the top here, Ken. 1.35.2, Harry Webb, 2 tenths off the bat. Nunez, 5 tenths. And then Sam Sue pretty much in his pocket and these are the guys starting at the back of the grid for this race yeah it's where the action's going to be coming from isn't it uh very quick times there and like you said through that race there tom davidson with that 35.2 uh, actually 10th quicker than his qualifying uh, pace so definitely finding it out on track in the uh in the heat of battle too so maybe alex pushing along keeping him honest there from second so. These guys definitely will be on the charge in the reverse of the grid. Harry Webb's going to be real tough to, uh, to get past here as well, John. He's going to be starting to lock her up on the pack today uh, for the second race, so yeah, definitely one to watch there. Yes, there we go, sign point. It's actually three teams. That's right, it's three teams. There's a Ferrari, a Bentley, and a Porsche, and I believe Sam. No, Sam's a TSR. But yeah, I do know that Sir Fosh, um, you know the other two guys. I should know the other two guys. Gold Black Saw, Gold Band Saw, whatever his name is, and the band Navidia. Navidia? Ivanuska! There you go. So I'm not going senile at all, Kane. The drivers are all really quick, and I've got three teams entered, and I can just about remember 
their names as well as the cars they're in. So I'm happy with that. We're going to see some serious, serious action here on track. One of the two commentators commentator, and this did say at the start of the first race that this championship wouldn't be decided until the final checkered flag at the end of the 13th race game. Um, which one of us was it that said that and how accurate do you think a prediction that was? Uh, as much as it pains me to say, John, it was you. And, uh, it is very, very accurate, these guys. Uh, definitely going to be waiting all on the line right up until the last check of play. The race 10, it just seems not yet to prove that even more. The, the top two guys there really in battle. Right up into the last lap, so as you say, we keep keep mentioning this reverse race grid, and there's reason for that. These guys will be looking to make charges, and get these these points up and on the tally, up yeah. there on the board, ready for the final week next week. Yes, indeed. We we'll see them. We do have the extra large logos. Come on, give a point, Mick. Uh, just in case the guys get a bit fruity in the chat, you know what racers are like. They're all prima donna egos, Kane. Prima donna egos, that's why I'm comment rate. You know what I mean? There's definitely no ego in comment rate. At all. No. <laughs> Keep a straight face no, when you no. see it, at least. At least try, Kane. Trying to keep a yeah. straight face here is Hope School Racer takes it all sorts of... Uh... All sorts of off-road there in the final stages of uh, free practice, sorry. The guy is now on the grid, waiting for this session to start and get off onto their formation lap. And let's just see. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And there we go. There is what we're looking for. There's Jackie Harris in the Michelin livery. Uh, row one alongside. It's Jason Westerby, row two is Messland in that very metallic, shiny Madrix livery. This Kyle Harris, row two once again. He'll be looking to hold on to a podium. Come on, Kyle, shake off Brands Hatch. You can do it, kid. And remember as well, you only store the cone in the blue liquid. You don't use it to bleach your hair as well, but life advice for you there, kid. There's Elliot Wilkie, Kane's one to watch. He's starting in fifth for this race. We've got Harry Webb. Starting in sixth, expect him to be on the podium come the end. We've got Pete Greaves starting in seventh. He'll be looking to avoid the incident of the opening. So, we'll hear in Clifford as well as Cornelius Philbinger. He'll be looking to make another great move. And then, no offence to anybody that we've just mentioned, then Kane, it gets interesting. We've got Sam Sue in tenth. We've got Johan Tai in eleventh. We've got Renny Renandito starting in twelfth. Nunez. In 13th, and Tom perennial pole sitter and just back to himself a race win. He is in 14th. Do we expect the guys with a white mix of their name to be ahead of all of the red drivers before the end of the race? Kate, talk to me. Too hard to say that. Too, <laughs> sure. Too hard to say that all five, six of those drivers are going to make it through. Um, going to be interesting to see who does make it. Tom Davidson, Alex Nunes, they're definitely, definitely the ones to watch there. There's two top of the top of the leaderboard after Rendy's unfortunate race one as Jackie Harris gets that Michelin Porsche off the line. These guys, there's Kyle getting them warmed up very, very quickly. Yes, indeed. Yeah, thank you. As he switched sides again, it looked like somebody was perhaps missing off the grid, but yeah, 14 drivers have entered and 14 have started, so no, there isn't a gap in the grid, so yes, he was making the bold move, tried the garage on there to warm his tyres, only difference is he held it. So well done Kyle, he can he gets himself off the line to sweet, there is Dausha Post once again, Elliot Wilkie, he will be determined to steal himself more carbon time, I'm sure, with his sideways antics. Uh, I'm not really sure it's in the spirit of winning the series, but it's definitely in the spirit of making some entertaining stuff for us to watch. Uh, Tom Davidson then. Oof. All the pace. None of the tyre grip into turn one. Ulan Park. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Very unprofessional, but this is going to be fun. Davidson, Nunes, Renan Dio, Ty and Sue. Main title protagonists starting in 10th through 14th. But... Yeah, they've got a solid task ahead of them. Cornelius Philbinger, he ain't no mug. Kieran Clifford, he ain't no mug. Pete Greaves, definitely not. And then you've got Harry Webb. 
Okay, let's not even get started on how quick he is. We've got Elliot Wilkie there as well. And the guys up front, Kyle Harris, he can hold his own as and when need to. And Etienne Meslin could certainly make things very, very, very interesting for the guys charging through the back. Who's going to win, Kate? <laughs> Harry Webb. There we go. I managed to say it correctly this time. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating to be fair. He's going to finish second and third. Yeah, yeah. Harry Webb's a cheat. He, that's his cheat code. That's like driving a Mercedes AMG. Hey, Simon. Uh, but, uh, who's going to take those other podium spots, kid? Definitely going to be uh, <laughs> definitely going to be interesting to see who does grab those spots, John. Um, uh, as we say, Elliot's been the consistent driver. He's starting all the way up that field as well. Definitely, definitely one to watch. Um, but cannot look past the Tom Davidson and Alex Nunez. They will be looking to make a charge. They will be looking to take as many points as possible from this race and uh, see how it all washes out leading into the final next week. Um, I predict it's still going to be extremely tight, as we said. There's only six points going into this, these two races. Um, two, of the, two of the top three drivers finishing one, two, and they're going to make that tighter again. So very, very close and very, very excited. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, like you say, if only someone had said it was going to go down to the last checker flag. Uh, anyway, I'm not banging on the drum anymore. Lodge Corner is where the drivers are now coming round. It is Michelin versus Madrix. It is Kyle Harris versus Etienne Meslin. It's Elliot like Wilkie versus that. Harry Webb. And it is all of them versus the track. No drive through penalties for anyone this time. They are four wide already going into turn one. Oh, and there's big contact then. West of and Harris. Harris goes off. And Kyle Harris has taken the lead of the race. He has Harry Webb already up into second place. And Elliot Wilkie has already shown off his airborne acrobatics to take third position. Harry Webb is absolutely going to throw this one. Up the inside, Kyle runs himself a bit wide, he holds on to the position, that's Cornelius Philbinger in the back I believe, he's just gone tumbling down the field once again, but we're watching the battle for first place, we'll try and catch up with what's going on down the field, Harry Webb though, has definitely come up, he's not going to go around that outside the shell, oh there's the slightest contact there, oh and that's going to absolutely bunch up the pack, let's go to Helicarp and see if there's that much more, oh bit of a four wide situation, bit more contact, Telsia, Black Falcon, and that is Kieran Clifford who's made it through, Marena Dito in the shell livery who's made it through and Elliot sideways Wilkie is off and running, Harry Webb has fallen right back down into the pack, Kyle Harris has also fallen down into the pack, so for Kane does that mean what I think it means? Is Elliot Wilkie leading the rest the race with Meslin in third, Clifford down in fifth, Pete Greaves is currently the man in third position Kane with Sam Sue following close in behind. We did expect drama on the first lap, this is not the drama we were expecting. Exactly that, John. Like you say, we did expect drama and it did happen. Plenty, plenty happened in those first corner, even. Uh, oh, Kieran's run wide. Tell Cell Tom Davidson, he's gone through, he's got Nunes in tow. There goes Kyle Harris off the track as well. He's got some dust. Harry Webb, side by side with Tom Davidson. No, sorry, so that's Tom Davidson, Ali Nunes. Oh, there's Kyle Harris. Harry Webb was involved in the background there. Oh, and that's Kyle gone off as well. There's Harry Webb then chasing his way through. Johan Tai, uh, no idea where he's gone. He's gone up to eighth position, Harry Webb. Uh, no idea, Ken. I think he's roughly someplace in about 10. He's got Kieran Clifford just in behind him. And Cornelius Filmager, who I did see spin early doors, he is someplace coming back into the pack. Jackie Harris is involved in the initial contact. Is in 13th, and there's Kyle down in 14th position. We've got Kieran Clifford. Uh, yeah, he is battling now with Harry Webb. Kyle Harris has come into the pits. Harry Webb is in ninth. They've got a bit of a gap then to Johan Tai. Stricken in the first race, running a pedal. He'll be hoping there's no repeat of that. Alex Nunes is up to seventh. He is still hot on the heels of Tom Davison. The pole position setter from race one and winner from race one. Running in the deal then. He is all over the back of Pete Grief. He's got Tom Davison. What a sandwich that is to be in Cairn. Let's just have a look at how close these guys and gals actually are on track. And I think it's safe to say, very... Oh, into that chicane. Look yeah, at the control. Very close there, John, absolutely. <laughs> Tom Davidson has gotten past Alex Nunez, so... Clearly, yeah, Tom Davidson started from the very back of the field. Oh, okay, well, let's look at the background, though. 
And Nunes has got the move back done again. Yeah. Nunes has got the move done, and I tell you what, it looks like Nunes and Deal's going to get the move done on Greaves as well. They are side by side. Tom Davison looks like he's trying to move, make a move back on Nunes. Oh, I love a double two by two, but no, they all fall single file into the line. Oh, Pete Greaves runs himself a bit wide. He's going to find himself a bit smoked off. Alex Nunes, he's going to inadvertently be blocked by Pete Greaves because he's got a side by side in front of him. So Tom Davison is going to close up in the breaking zone. He did it before I got a chance to see it. That is the differential there. Pete Greaves, oh, he doesn't get a good exit there, Kane. And that is Nunez and Davison free and off chasing around the deal. Yeah, and these guys again locked in battle. One, two, three here. Maybe not one, two, three on track, but yeah. Uh, Randy, Alex and Tom, all those top three drivers from the championship leading into this round on themselves amongst each other again with Etnaid proving a little bit of cork in the bottle at the moment. We'll see how many can get past him, how quickly he can be. be the uh, definitive move here, how quick can we get past uh, Etnaid and get away from all of this drama. We see one of those drivers run through that chicane there, just missing the breaking point. Well, there's quite a few positions out there. That wasn't Tom Davidson, was it, Ron? Uh No, Tom is still no, running. Was, Tom yeah. is still running. I did say at the start of the race that Etienne was going to be nowhere to get... Oh, and that's, that's Sam Sue! Sam Sue! Oh, he's stationary. He's going to hold his breath. Oh, I'll tell you what. Oh, Sam. Whoa, I'll tell you what. Somebody had to breathe deep there. That was Cornelius Philbin that I'd love to see not only an on board from his point of view, but his face has not happened because that would have been a picture of Elliot Wilkie. Kane's one to watch. He is winning the race. We've got Renny Renadito temporarily in second place. Nunez has got past Messland as well, so it's Nunez that's charging onto the back of Renadito. And in the background, we've got Pete Greaves and Tom Davison going absolutely hammering Tom, and he'll be looking to get that done as quickly as possible because Harry Webb is closing the distance. Let's just have a look at Tom Davison and pop it up the outside. No problem at all for Etienne and Messlin then. Uh, sorry for Davison getting past Messlin. And I tell you what, Harry Webb has been slowed up ever so slightly. Got a great exit to that corner. We can see just how close these guys are getting. Uh, let's jump back and watch Harry Webb. So Pete has extricated himself from the current situation. They're side by side. Oh, Harry Webb then. Yep, he is going to nail that absolutely up inside the trees. I'm going to nail our view and that's going to give him Shell Oil Corner once again. Yeah, very, very, very quick through there is Harry. And he is going to be off and chasing Homeschool, who has himself quite a few drivers bunched up just in front of him and would you believe me if I said that Tom Davison was probably going to be all kinds involved? He is dropping off the back though of Alex Nunez. And I'll tell you what, okay, oh Nunez catches a lot of care there. This is the battle to watch then. Nunez and Renan Dito, the battle for second position, played right into the hands of Wilkie, who is lapping with decent lap teams at the minute, but these two guys battling are holding themselves up as they come side backs. Oh, Alex, hold on to that car. Oh, I tell you what, both men compromised then, and I'll tell you what, here he comes, do, 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 super and tall! Tom Davidson, John, as you say, Tom Davidson getting both those, Randy, off of the track, way back now, losing plenty of time, both of you guys running off track, but Tom, back in front of Alex again, these guys <laughs> have been finding each other on track all night long. Yeah, they really have, they really have, and it looks like their love affair on track is due to continue. Speaking of, though, look at this. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Some midfield action. Who is this? There's Johan, Ty Cornelius, Filmager, Sam Sue, who made a mistake. And is Kieran Clifford involved there? Uh, no, Kieran Clifford is just off the back of that little group there. So he will look to get caught up. And um, there we go. Oh, Sam getting very, very close to Cornelius. Sam definitely the quicker out of these four. Oh, and a bit of contact there. And that has ended the two races right there. So Sam Sue and Kieran Clifford are going to cruise on through. And uh, yeah, through the chicane they go. Kieran then making up a couple of places. Cornelius and Sam involved in all kinds of sideways. Oh no, sorry, it's Sam that's continuing onwards. It was Cornelius that was involved there. And yeah, him and Johan. Now definitely forlorn and further down the field as the battle intensifies up front. Harry Webb is absolutely closing the gap 
The reason he's closing the gap is because the men fighting over second position are fighting over second position, Kane. We are almost <coughs> at the halfway of this reverse order grid. These three guys have these two guys specifically have flown through the field. Harry got caught in a bit of an incident, made a mistake, dropped right back. He's catching back up to them again. Wilkie 7.7 seconds up the road. Wilkie's got to be looking good to win this, considering the pace and ability of these three guys. They're probably going to end up, they could potentially end up just battling to the end and neutralising any of their chances to actually win the race and gift this one to Wilkie. Yeah, let's hope that does happen. Um, for my sake, anyway, usually the commentator first coming out as soon as we mention the driver to watch. Yeah, Alex, Alex and Tom definitely pushing each other along, so they could in fact push each other all the way to the front. Let's let's not hope that happens for early its sake. But a gap slightly slightly lessening by about half a second each each lap if these guys remain consistent. So. At that pace, it's going to be one awful uh, battle for first place coming into the, the final couple of laps, John. So, for anybody out there... Oh, I was just about to say, Ren and Dio, yeah, they were close. And him and Ren and Dio then, I've had a bit of a coming together, Kane. And I tell you what, there is Home School Racer appearing in the background with one fully intact Porsche. And, uh, yeah, Ren and Dio then, not happy with his tyres. Home school taking evasive action and yeah, Ren and Dio realising there's absolutely no way he's getting that straightened up and not making someone else's day worse. So he gets well and truly out of the way. So Greaves then finds himself up into eighth position. A good solid top ten if he can hold this. And I'll tell you what, he absolutely has got the temperament. He only started, annoyingly enough, he started some race less than a year ago. He's already signed for an endurance team very, very quick. Definitely has the temperament to be a great racer. Oh, just as I give him all the compliments. Ah, oh, undulation, weight transfer came, came over. Yeah, compliments, curses, commentators, John. <laughs> Thanks um, very much, under the bus, yeah, throw it. <laughs> def <laughs> definitely, definitely real and in action. These guys, John and Alex now, uh, just a little bit off the back of Tom, but that gap already closed to under six seconds, John. Nine and a half minutes left. Six second gap from Tom to Elliot. This is not going to be as easy, easy as Elliot had hoped for. So it did definitely get a great start to the um, opening lap. Oh, Westerby's well, so. made a mistake, and this is going to make this very interesting. Kieran, I'm on board with Ren and Dio. It was just out of the bat between him and Johan Tai. <coughs> or Johan try filling your tank with petrol to get to the end of the race. Um, let's see if he's got enough fuel to get to the end of the race this time. If he does, it's going to be aided by the fact that he could well be in the slipstream of Rennie Rennie Dio goes around the outside of the chicane. Wow. No fear whatsoever in the shell. And it's ironic that Johan has been overtaken by a petrol based livery considering his antics in the first race. Good to see Nunez pushing him across the line. And Rennie Dio showing no such favours this time. He's going to drag him across the line. By the look at it, and these two drivers are now going to get very, very, very close to Jason Westerby. Indeed, Jason, of course, we saw made a mistake not too many corners ago. Um, you would have to feel that these two guys have definitely got the pace on them. Just up ahead of them, man. Oh, just as I say that, because of the commentator, sideways action from Ren and Dio. He is taking the shell livery to the next extent. Give us a full side on view of the whole entire side panel of that door. And then he goes once again the opposite locking. And he's got the overtake done. Kane, I'm going for a lie down in a darker room. Please tell me what's going on here, man. <laughs> yeah, Randy on the mass charge here, John. He's looking to move, uh, make up for those positions he's lost already. Uh, up into eight. Definitely up into seventh, sorry. And definitely thrown that Porsche around. Like it's its last race today. Uh, those tyres are going to be very, very worn. He comes around the hairpin of Shell's oil corner and gets it off Oh, again. Jason. He's getting it in there. Tires. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Saturday night, lads, I know. But, oh, but I tell you what as well, that's what it is. Oh, he's gone off track. He's gone off track in the Team Parker Racing. Uh, speaking of Team Parker Racing, Kane. Yes, John, some massive, <laughs> massive news. Uh, from one of the former drivers from the field, uh, a Mr. Josh Webster. 
Indeed, really indeed. Nice. Yes, indeed, Josh Webster. He has signed to drive next season in the Porsche Cup car. He's doing some testing today. I'm allowed to say, I'm not even sure how much I'd like to say, but listen, congratulations, Josh. We've mentioned it on Twitter. We've mentioned it on every stream. And it is a great honour for me and a great badge of honour to say that I've commented on a genuinely amazing real life driver. It stuns me that it takes so long for me to get a drive. I don't know what the drive model was thinking about, but it is great to see you back in what is a quite monstrous car. That thing is an absolute beast of a Porsche. So yeah, looking forward to seeing you on track next season. And uh, yeah, absolutely amazingly well done for getting yourself another drive. And here's to some more championship titles before your long and illustrious career ends, I'm absolutely sure. Um, still on the track with us though, Elliot Wilkie. I did think, we did think the battling was going to play into his hands. The battle is over with Sue and Nunes taking themselves out of the race. So Elliot Wilkie, well, Kane, he was your one to watch six minutes to go in the rear view mirror. In fact, if we jump on and look at his worst sponsored rear spoiler lurking in the back, uh, any, oh, three or four corners from now, we're going to get a very, very clear sight of the word tell cell. And that's because it's on the front bonnet of one Tom Davison. So he, oh, has a bit of a wiggle there. Come on, Tom, don't ruin this monologue, mate. This is just this is some beautiful Harry stuff. Webb, John. Sorry, Harry Webb into the pits. Huge. Ah. He's up into third position there. So, oh, wow. Massive, massive news there. I haven't managed to catch exactly what happened, but. That brings Kieran Clifford up into fifth, Sam Sue back into fourth, Alex Nunes into third, and no longer has that that Porsche of Harry Webb in front of him. So the Spectre. Again, You're allowed to say Spectre when Harry Webb is chasing you down on track. That's a Spectre. <laughs> oh, look at the background action from Sam Sue as well. These guys are just out there having massive amounts of fun down Canaan. Ah, uh, for one, I'm loving it, if I'm honest. This is epic stuff in these courses. It's a puncture, John. <laughs> Harry's in the chat here. No! I got a puncture. Ah! So proves all too real how throwing these cars around can cause that sort of damage. So, a couple too many curbs, possibly, Harry. Ah, um, savage stuff. Probably causing causing some of that damage, but yeah, 15 minutes into the race, that's such an unfortunate. Yeah, that um, really is. Yeah, who cursed him? Who said game. he was doing well? I'm pretty sure it was you. Uh, John, volume is good, co-host is a whisper. Ah, oh, no way. Uh, two seconds. Uh, what's the other review, Ken? Uh, oh no, you're at maximum. Ken, could you be your microphone a little bit? Oh, it's maybe just on YouTube. No one on Twitch has mentioned it. So it's maybe just YouTube, but you are definitely coming through loud and clear on mine. Uh, let me just turn the game volume down. To, whoa! Turning the volume down just a little bit. Oh, I'll tell you what. How did Wilkie hold that cane? Seriously, we need to check this man isn't actually a stunt driver on the Fast and the Furious. That was an epic save in these cars. He's, uh, he's definitely had his practice getting this... Porsche sideways throughout the race, John, and he's not going to stop right now. We've got Tom Davidson hunting closely, and that's only going to push Elliot further and further along. So, I only expect this Porsche to get more and more sideways as the race goes on. Yes, and, yeah, well, Harry does, in fact, take too much curbs, lost the pressure, and then left rear was gone. So, as we suspected, those. Those curbs causing all sorts of dramas there, and Tom Davidson's going to cause all sorts of dramas for Elliot in these last two or three laps here, John. Yes, indeed he is. Indeed he is. Uh, Kyle, there, he got himself excited. Thought, Are you in the toilet, John? No, there is several jokes here, Kyle. I will leave them alone, especially as you're currently sat in the pits, I'm sure, watching. So, good evening. Hope you're enjoying the end of the race. Uh, you need to get your finger out Donington next week. I want you to cross the line in the top five, both races, right? You have the hardest name to defend, my friend. It's your organisation. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Get to the finish line. So that is your orders from the pit crew. Who is going to win? Who is going to win? Kane, you said Harry Webb. Miles wrong, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that bus. <laughs> <laughs> no point stabbing someone in the back where you can walk up to them with a smile on, their, on your face and do it straight in the chest. But yes, so Keynes, 
<coughs> prediction was rubbish. And my prediction that this would go down to the last race of the season has been absolutely spot on. Uh, Nunez looks like he's going to finish in third, with Davidson in second in this race. Um, so it's going to make it a very, 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 very interesting. Oh, Davidson. Now, he is just making it interesting. Cornelius has come into the pit. He may well be sporting some damage. Let's jump back on. Let's just watch once again at how much... Oh, Jackie Harris. Give me a bit of a fright there. Oh, I'll tell you what's going on inside the shell or corner. Wow. What a place to even try. We've never mind side by side. He took it up the inside. Held the line. He's going off the outside line here. Inside through the chicane. Oh, Elliot is not forgiving this one up. No. Oh, he's come straight back. Oh, catch your breath, ladies and gents. A minute left to go in the lead. It's changing hands. And I'll tell you what else might change hands. That might be fifth position. Cor Cornelius Clifford. <laughs> Kieran Clifford is hanging on in there to fifth position. Involved in the same incident as Pete Greaves in the first race. Both of them tumbled down the order. Kieran did come into the pit, so he was definitely the worst off. Oh, Ren and Dito then. Oh, absolutely. There we go, Kate. There is what happens when you push your tyres too hard at the start of a 20-minute race in these cars. The last minute, you are breathing deep, my friend. Yeah, there was a big uh, breathing deep for him there, Randy. Uh, getting all sorts of loose there, trying to uh, get past Kieran Clifford in these last laps. Tom Davidson, now half a second in front of Elliot Wilkie. Um, just caught the slight replay there, Dud did look like Elliot for the first time in this race just eased off that that accelerator pedal as was getting sideways and uh, Tom Davidson making that move so Elliot with just a the smallest amount of patience there and it's gonna keep him in second spot and it's gonna be a fantastic finish for him yes indeed it is so Wilkie then having a bit much fun in the second race couldn't quite transfer that to a race win, but I guarantee you he will be leaving this race with the biggest smile on his face out of all the drivers. Oh, and there you go. I'm pretty sure he's determined to leave a little signature at each corner here. Coming through as she came once again. Yeah, give it a bit of sideways action. Absolutely love this year. Love seeing the guys on the PC throw these 2017 Porsche Cup cars about, especially in these liveries, Kane. We've got Kyle Harris. Look at that thing. Deutsche Post. Absolutely stunning livery there. He's going to finish in the pits alongside the Blau Racing of Harry Webb. Jackie Harris. Oh, he's popping into the pits as well. He's got a bit much damage. And Cornelius Fellowger in the Hublot. He is going to finish in the pits as well. Thankfully, though, Pete Greaves is still off and running in a nice, clean, in-one-piece brand of racing livery. He's going to bring his Porsche all the way home. And he is going to get himself a top 10 position. We should jump back on board with Davidson though, because I believe he has just taken the checkered flag. So Tom Davidson, what a week he has had. Two races, one pole position, two victories. Tom Davidson bringing it home in fantastic fashion in the Telcel car. There's Elliot Wilkie. <coughs> For me, definite driver of the steam sideways at every opportunity and even gets himself a podium and race two. Love to see it, and here come the donuts. We'll get back to them in a moment, because there's Sam Sue, our last man on the podium. Third place for him, and here's Alex Nunez. Sporting conduct of the evening goes to Alex, of course. Help a stranded, petrolless Johan Tai cross the line. And here is Kieran Clifford. There he is in the powerful delivery. He's got himself a fifth position. Here's Renny Renandito. Giving it the big donuts in the shell delivery. He finished in sixth with Johan Tai. In seventh, we can't see the cars now for all the smoke, but I can assure you that Jason wants to be there. He is, <coughs> he's in there someplace, and he finished in eighth. And there's the Midrix of Etienne Nestle. And there is Homeschool Racer, he is going to charge it off. Bang! Homeschool torpedo, right there, ladies and gentlemen. In the brand racing. Oh, look at that, fixed his bumper. The second contact, love to see it. Cornelius Filminger, our sponsor, he finished in 11th. Jackie Harris in 12th. Harry Webb in 13th and Kyle Harris finished in 14th position let's get some heli cam let's look at some donuts let's catch our breath Kane what a race that was for race number 11 yeah absolutely John um, all the action getting provided for us Tom Davidson with the perfect perfect round so qualified in first finishes the first race in the front 
and then started the the second race from the back of the grid finished the, finished at the front again so total points haul for tom is going to be very very handy for him as he charges down alex for that championship but yeah rounds uh race numbers 10 11 complete yes indeed Woof. Yeah, no, you catch my breath after that one. Another absolutely sterling bang put in by the guys and gals <coughs> here at the Rapid Drivers Club, of course, sponsored by Vespa, creating virtual experiences that feel natural, immersing you in a 3D multiplayer work environment. We're collaborating, brainstorming, and team building are both productive and creative. Vespa, bringing you the tools to make work as enjoyable as multiplayer gaming. Well, that is round six, done, dusted, and in the bag. Race numbers 10 and 11 in action. It just keeps on coming. As our drivers and these cars, let's face it, once again deliver some seriously high-octane action and some seriously impressive drives. And this really is going to go right down to the last two races next weekend. Absolutely, John. And next week we do see that return to Donington for round seven and the final final two races of the series. Table is going to be wide open. Can't wait to, to see the updated points at the end of this. Um, and uh, yeah, very much looking forward to next round. Indeed. And let's not forget, of course, yes, reverse order grids. Reverse, <laughs> reverse order grids. So plenty of high drama to come. And the series crown that won't be decided until... The final checkered flag, flag. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> but for tonight, though, for tonight, though, that is our checkered flag. Thank you very much to everyone that joined us in the chat. Thank you to everyone that joined us on the track. Thank you to Rapid Drivers Club for putting this on. It's been a fantastic series so far, and it promises to be a fantastic finale. And of course, thank you to my wingman Kane. Thank you, everyone. Always a pleasure to be here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. So, with a good night from Kane. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>